Okay? And another example of a non-nucleophilic nucleophile that's chunky, hindered, basic, is terbutanol over here. And this is used for E1 reactions. So, so at this point here, you guys should start noticing some little similarities between elimination reactions and substitution reactions. And what I'm going to do now is explain to you guys some similarities and key differences between substitution reactions and, and elimination reactions. Now you guys can spot the difference, OK? All right, so for uh, first of all, do you remember my previous video about uh, substitution reactions? Do you remember why uh, SN2 is called SN2 and why SN1 is SN1? Well, it's because it's nucleophilic substitution, because your nucleophile is substituting in. Well, in this case here, we're going to be doing an elimination reaction. So you don't have to worry about substitution anymore. And the reason why there's a 2 for E2 and why there was a 2 in SN2 is the same exact reason. There's two molecules that, gonna, that are, that are going to play a role in how fast the reaction occurs. Uh, it's going to be the leaving group, of course, because that's going to be leaving. If, lean, if the leaving group's not willing to leave, then your reaction isn't going to occur as quickly. But now, instead of a strong nucleophile that's going to have an effect in how fast your reaction occurs, it's going to be a strong base. And like I said before, you can tell if it's a strong base if it's usually charged, because then that means there are valence electrons here that are ready to go and grab a proton or a hydrogen from your molecule over here. I'm not going to tell you which hydrogen yet, just so you guys um, can try it out in the product prediction in, in just a couple of minutes. But yeah, so E2, because two molecules are actually playing a role in how fast it occurs, your leaving group and your base. And then for E1, uh, once again, it's best if, it's, uh, if it, it's best if the carbon is tertiary, so right here. And then uh, only one molecule is going to have an effect on how fast the reaction occurs, and that molecule is going to be just the leaving group, okay? Because uh, our, which we'll call it, sorry, our nucleophile in this case here, it's a mild base. So a mild base isn't going to have the ability or the power to kick the reaction into gear and get it going. So you have to wait for your leaving group to leave first and make your molecule unstable, and then your, nucle and then your uh, nucleophile slash, it's, it's going to be like a base now, it's going to do its job and try and stabilize your molecule. Okay. So for elimination reactions, the goal is no longer to substitute into your molecule, but instead you're trying to form carbon-carbon double bonds, also known as alkenes. All right? So because uh, you're going to be forming carbon-carbon uh, double bonds, uh, or alkenes, right? in order to form them, you're going to be kicking out your leaving group uh, and also taking away hydrogen with your bases. And since there's so many hydrogens in your molecules, in your molecule that you can target, chances are you're going to get multiple products. All right. So here are some really, really great points that you guys really want to just uh, remember and don't forget because they're very, very specific to E2 and E1. And uh, I'm just going to go over it real quickly. Non-nucleophilic nucleophiles, like these guys here, that are chunky, hindered, and basic. All right? And then, um, let's see. You're going to form carbon-carbon double bonds or alkenes in your products. So just keep just remember that. That's kind of useful. And then uh, your substrate, it's best if your substrate carbon, uh, the, sorry, it's best if the carbon with the leaving group is tertiary. Because this way, if it's tertiary, it's all blocked up. You know, if you have a nucleophile trying to attack, let's say, oh, let's say this is a nucleophile trying to attack, it can't access the carbon in there. So that's why uh, tertiary carbons are good for elimination reactions. Because you have a tertiary carbon, substitution can't really occur. The only reaction that can really occur is um, sorry, sub a substitution reaction can occur, and that's SN1. But uh, usually, if, you, if, you, if your nucleophile isn't that good of a nucleophile, then SN1 can occur. If your nucleophile is going to be acting like a base, then you're going to be carrying out an elimination reaction. Okay? So I know that was a lot to take in right now, but what I want you guys to do is uh, take, in, take, take notes for uh, these key points, and also try and do the product prediction right now. I'm going to have the products up in just a couple seconds. And then, uh, yeah, so pause the video and try and get the products for these reactions. OK? E2 and E1. All right, good luck. OK, thanks for staying. Here are your products for the E2 reaction and the E1 reaction. 
All right, so one thing you guys may want to note is that just like the substitution reaction, you start off charged and you end up charged. But for E1, you start off neutral and you end up neutral, okay? Uh, just like SN2 and SN1. But anyway, so your products, uh, if you take a look, you actually get two of the same products for your E2 that you get for your E1 reaction. But there's this an exception here. The, only this product can be formed through the E1 mechanism and not by the E2. If you're curious about why this is, make sure you guys check out my mechanism videos, which will be either part two and three or part three and four, depending on how long this video was. But yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, that's basically it for this video. Um, take one more look. Hopefully uh, this was helpful for you guys. If um, anything's not clear, just post a, post a question down below and I'll be sure to answer it for you as soon as I can. And then, um, yeah, if you liked, the way I explain elimination reactions, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button to get updated when I make new videos. And then, yeah, share this video with your friends if you felt like it helped. All right, bye.